too much noise going on here. We've got Tyson singing for us at the end of the show and they're rehearsing. Uh, first letter tonight, if you can hear me. I'm out of my raging hormone stage, apparently. Uh, don't give up just because I'm here talking. Just keep going. It sounds good in the background. Where were we? We had raging hormones happening. Maybe that's what's happening in the back as well. I don't know what that letter's about. I haven't read these tonight yet. It's Second letter tonight, is the cat too far out of the bag? Might be. Don't know what that's about either. And the last one, DNA or evil. Notions of helping one another, turning the other cheek and doing no harm to other people. We've lost it, haven't we? We'll see what the panel's got to say. Tyson's going to sing us out at the end of the program. Don't go away. Sweet and sour coming up in about 20 seconds. See you in a minute. <laughs> Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. to have your company, Gary Mitchell, with you for the next half hour. First up on the program tonight, he's right here, and he's going to sing us out. You saw a little bit in the beginning as well. Hello, Tyson. Evening, Gary. How you going? Look what I've got. Look what I'm holding. What's this? It's my new CD. From now on, it's a country rock album I've just released. Tyson's flown over all the way from Queensland to be with us tonight, and he's going to perform for you at the end of the show I a am. song called... Cry Like a Baby. Done a lot of that in my lifetime. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Terrific to have you here, mate. Thank you very much for having me. And there's a lovely lady sitting next to you who's also uh, accompanied you all the way over from Queensland as well. Hello, my mate Claire. Hello, Gary. It's how been are forever. You? How long? Two years. I said three months, but I'm back. See, <laughs> see, we've not had no good grounded sex advice from our regular sexologist who isn't that regular anymore. What's going on? No, it's we're, we're going to start being more regular from now on. <laughs> and what about your appearances? <laughs> good to have you here. Huh? Terrific to have you back. Hello, my mate Anita. Hello, me. How are you? I'm good. I've been really busy. Really good. What have you been doing? Why busy? I oh, know we've just been doing a lot of filming. Ooh. Anything to do with those eye extensions that you've got? What are, they, what are they called? Eyelash extensions that we were talking about. Any good? I have to look part pretty. You look pretty anyway. You don't need them. Goodness me. Okay. How are your extensions going, Harry? As you can see, they're not going too well. They're not going too well. How are you, I need, get, I need to get a refund. Give me, give me some good news on the economy, will you? Uh, I'm tipping another interest rate drop. Mm. I'm going against the grain. Everyone doesn't think so, but uh, I, think I still so. think we're going to have another rate drop. I reckon. I we're agree. Rate drop. But the good news is, the market, this is a good time to buy. Is it? Great time. A lot uh, of people... So of those already invested, it, when you... Mm, don't sell. <laughs> not a good time to sell. I it's would a good love time to buy. buy. It's not oh, a, good it's a great time, time to buy. There's right some now. good, there's some good deals month. around. Good some bit. good deals. Mm. Yeah. And, okay. and, right. and look, housing loan rates sub 5%. I mean, that's cheap money. It's phenomenal. 5%, it is Sub cheap, mate. No? I've got a mate who told me um, the only people who lose in real estate are the people who have to sell. Oh, well, sometimes if you can hang on, I mean, the European ways you buy and never sell. They're the guys that never lose. Because it always goes up over time. It like always gold, goes up. Slowly over time. Have you read the letters? Yeah, absolutely. And? <clears throat> Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Here we go. Letter number one. There, Gary. Well, that's the first time someone's written Dear Gary for a while. <laughs> no, no. I don't want to have kids. And no wonder they put Dear Gary. OK. <laughs> I, n I've never particularly uh, been maternal towards any of my nieces or nephews in spite of loving them to bits and spoiling them rotten. My girlfriends look at me as if I have two heads when I mention it and they all seem to chorus that uh, I'll get over that and really crave children when I'm out of my raging hormone stage, apparently, when I hit my mid-30s. Well, really? Maybe I'm missing a parent hormone, is, if there is such a thing. I don't know why I don't want kids and I'm starting to feel the odd woman out. I just have no desire to be a mum at this stage. Does it change or am I uh, a thoroughly indulgent party girl, as my mum suggests? I'm also starting to think that we're in the grips of an unshakable parent culture because for the last 50,000 years, that's all we've done as women. And even though since the 1960s and the introduction of the pill we've had the ability to choose, it seems to me we just don't. 
Instead, we accept what's always been thought normal to just default to the expected breeding program. So please let me know, am I an exception or am I the way of the future? And it comes to us from uh, Adriana of Lac Lucky Bay in South Australia. Not a lot happening in Lucky Bay in South <laughs> Australia. Harry, she doesn't want to have kids. Is that normal or not normal? Well, I, 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 don't think it's, I don't think it's normal or not normal. I just think it's just her decision. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I don't have kids, but uh, it just happened that way. And um, it's not that you don't like them, I love them. They're fantastic. Just didn't have the right person that you wanted to have kids with. I think when the right person comes along, she might change her mind. And it's, uh, and it, you know, what, it's unshakable culture for the last 50,000 years. Women are doing a lot more than just been having babies. There's been a lot more going on apart from that. You, sh you share my perspective, it just didn't happen for you. Yeah, but there's, it did. But does a woman feel like that, Anita? How does it work? Do you want kids? I'd love kids. Why do you want kids? But, oh, just because I would love to be a mother one day with the right person when you meet your husband and you get married and, and you have children. What's so enticing about changing dirty nappies, Look, getting no, up in the it's middle not of the that. night? I, it's not that. I think as a woman, it is a, I believe it is a great gift to be able to have a human being grow and you can create something and then to give birth as well. I mean, it's it's a gift as a, as a woman to be able to carry something for, you know, for nine months and then give birth to a beautiful human being. And um, so... You can't hand them back, although many people no, today but, try but I to. think I think, and I, I hear everyone who has had children in, in my life around me, um, they do say that once that child is born, that, that mother instinct just kicks in because it is, it's a part of you. Okay. What do you but, say to you know, Adriana, who doesn't want I kids think, at the moment? Uh, look, it is her decision. Um, it's her body. She needs to do what is right and what she believes is right for her, bo her body. But I think, look, if she does meet the right person and fall in love, then maybe the decision might change. But it is, bottom line, it, it's down to her. Okay. Is it going to change? Mm -hmm. Look, it could change. It's possible. Anything's possible. I was one, just like, just like her. At um, 26 years of age, I said, never want to have children. I'm going to party and just enjoy my life. I was a party girl, just like you. Three weeks later, I met a guy. It just takes one night. <laughs> but did you meet a guy and suddenly go, I want your children? No, I didn't. I didn't. I met a guy and I fell pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that will do it. Wow. And then I decided to have the child, which I'm glad I did. It was a shock at first, and I did, and it's the best decision I ever made. And, and did your thinking change? Definitely, definitely. Once I had that baby, I had to learn how to change nappies really quick. And now, <laughs> and now that you've got the perspective of being a mother, mm. uh, how much different would your life be if you never had that child? If you didn't fall pregnant and you decided not to have kids, do you think you would have missed out? I couldn't imagine not having them. I've got two girls now and best Can't thing that ever happened to me. Not saying that um, if, if it didn't happen that way, if it happened the way it happened with Harry, I would have still accepted that. I wouldn't have known any different. But now I have got two girls, I know the difference and I would never take it back. Okay. Best La decision I made. Last word on this question to a man, <laughs> Tyson. Look, I say don't succumb to the peer pressure from your friends or your family. It's your body, it's your choice. You do what you want. You're not a baby factory, you're not a breeding factory. You need to believe that you don't have to follow a stereotype. You can be whatever you want. It's your life, your decisions, and you can't blame anybody. When we come back, we're going to be talking about whether the media is fueling every single idiot's dream of media glory. That's what it says there. It. Okay. Right. Right. Wow. When we come back, more on Sweet and Sound. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> 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 on this one, welcome back to Sweet and Sour. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's appearing right now on your screen, which is letters at sweetandsour.net.au or visit our website. There it is, sweetandsour.net.au. Give us a like on Facebook, send us a tweet, and we've got something else, but I can't remember what the something else is because Travis told me we've got another thing coming up. But we'll worry about that next week. The movie that we're going to send you to this week, courtesy of the beautiful Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications, for all those people who do get their letters written out, is The Book of Life. There it was on the screen. And I suppose we're getting straight into the letter now that that's all gone. All right, we can do that. Letter number two, titled Evil Prophet, Dear Panel. 
I'm sick of the media being irresponsible. It's as if the fourth estate bears no responsibility for so much of the ills of the modern era. Yet as I see it, they perpetuate the negative and I think it's because bad news sells much more than good news. It makes for good profit. Take, for example, the Sydney siege at Lint Cafe. Lint's not spelt like that. Uh, every single <laughs> TV station gave 100% coverage to the madman's antics. This let every single idiot entertaining thoughts of media glory through violence the opportunity to see that their antisocial and destructive efforts will be rewarded if they decide to repeat the, ex the exercise or similar. Then we have politics. These media outlets are not only prompting situations, they're creating them. I'm sure there would not have been a prime ministerial spill motion against Tony Abbott if the media were not complicit in bringing it on. The media needs to be made responsible, but how can this happen? Is the cat too far out of the bag and we're no longer able to pass legislation to curtail this irresponsible behaviour? We have to do something and now, but what? Lawrence of Inaloo, WA, we're going straight to Tyson. What's going on there? Is the media irresponsible, responsible, or how do you see it? Mate, I don't think the media is responsible for people's actions. I think individuals that, that want attention, they will always find it, whether it's through the media or just through a large gathering of people. You can't blame the media for reporting what's happening. Is one worse than the other? TV? Print no, media? It's, it's all very similar. All in the same bag? All in the same bag. The same, Absolutely. So people have to be responsible. I think I've tend to agree with that. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to bias you. <laughs> How much responsibility should the media barons have? Well, I think the media, well, we're going to hear the news anyway, and we need to be informed. We want to hear what's going on. I don't personally sit there and watch the six o'clock news every night or, or very rarely watch it at all. But on Facebook, social media, it's going to get you in two seconds. News gets to you so quick these days. So I think uh, no matter what, we, we need to be informed and... You, know, you choose, you choose we, your media we choo outfit. We choose and I can switch off to some things and think I've heard that a hundred times. I'm not, I'm your really responsibility dead. or their responsibility? It's my responsibility. That's the yeah. message. Whose responsibility is it? It is your responsibility, yep, to decide whether you, what you choose, what you want to see, what you want to hear, what you want to read. Um, and the media, like, they're just putting out there what, um, what is happening. Some things might be... And dramatized a little bit and, and exactly because it's a ratings thing so I've they will tend profit. to yeah they will tend to sensationalize things a little bit but it's still really what's going on that, and they do that so they can sell more that's right mm. simple as that they're profit making institutions they're not there for the benefit of your health no. or anything else that's what Harry, you uh, true perspective do they have any responsibility or should they have a responsibility should no. we make them no, I agree 100% with Anita. It's, it's, it's up to you to switch off. The, the, Lawrence, you might as well go and live in North Korea, where you've got no media. I mean, it's, we, we, we have the right for free speech. It doesn't mean you need to agree with someone or, or not agree with someone or see something or whatever. We have the right to free speech. The big difference is I don't agree that people have the right to be um, denigrate people with free speech. I don't. Some of the stuff that you see on Twitter and it's just horrific. But if we take away free speech, we look at North Korea. That's where we're we going to end up. North Korea. Media, media will be, be will be locked out of the media. You know, the Lint thing was was it was current news. You know, are they? And they, it was happening. And they, do they have did they have a correct perspective though that this guy was given glory for 24 hours because the coverage was almost saturation? Look, I, I, I don't. It's his words, Lawrence Glory. I wouldn't say it was glory. I'd say it was information. People were interested. It was a it was an event that occurred in Australia that had never happened before. It was you know it was horrifying, That's shocking for the families and um, you know. And they needed to report on what was going on. It's your responsibility. The panel That's is it. united. When we come back, we're going to be talking about, ooh, why are young ooh. men seduced by evil? Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sour. See you soon. Hi, I'm Rebecca Frost. Frost by name, Frosty by nature on Sweet and Sour. And sour. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour, straight into the last letter of the night. Dear Sweet and Sour, could you please explain to me why young men who are really still boys 
are so easily and readily seduced by evil, violent and antisocial crusades like ISIS. At the same time, can you please tell me why every society on this planet seems to have completely steered away from reinforcing at the home and at the school level the more sophisticated notions of helping one another, turning the other cheek and doing no harm to one another. We in the Western world have embraced this competition model which ultimately leads men, and it is mainly men, uh, to killing one another in the name of their particular competitive crusade. What is missing in our DNA that creates such a primitive and destructive urge in all of us, but especially in our young men. Marcus of Bellevue Hills in New South Wales and Anita, you're first up on that. Is it in our DNA? No, I don't, I, I don't think it's in our DNA. I think it, it all comes, um, look, it all starts at, at home when, you know, with the parents, you know, this whole, the old saying, like, you tell your boys, you know, oh, don't cry, big boys don't cry, get over it and suck it up. I think today, especially, those things are changing. We are becoming um, softer towards towards young young men. Um, and there is a lot of, of schools, there's a lot of programs out there to um, to actually help, help children and adolescents, especially that are suffering from depression, like this young man was suffering. Um, so I think... The okay. young man that uh, was in Melbourne who yes, um, yes. hopped on the plane and went to work for Yeah, that, for that's right. I mean, I think we are doing a lot more else. than what we did, um, you know, back in the day, like 10, 20 years ago. But, you know, it's just not enough and that's where it does need to come down to, to the home, to, to the Times families. Times are different. Notions of helping one, one another, turning the other cheek and doing no harm. I, I, no, I think, I think today more so there's, there's people out there that are more involved in what's going on and helping other people more than ever. I think people were turning the other cheek a long time ago. Things are changing now. Oh, from what I believe anyway, from what I've seen, there's a lot of beautiful lots people Lots of people out there. do lots of harm to one another, even in their day-to-day -day mm. business life. But there seems to be more help today than there was. Because we need more help today. But there is the help there, it's just, it's confusing. I think the help's growing at the proportion of the rate of this notion being eroded. We need more help today. We didn't need so much help yesterday because everyone was helping one another. Now, there's even the kids I find, there's, they're good, we're all good people, but the notion of helping one another and doing no harm. Harry, what's your take on this one? I think I tend to agree a bit with Anita. It's, um, it's family structure. You need to bring back family core values and, and you need to bring back the, the core values of respect uh, to, to each other. I mean, the... Um, there just, there just doesn't seem to be this this male-dominated people that young boys can go to as role models to go and see. They they seek their attention from, you know, with everybody can have a TV channel now with YouTube, and they, these guys, these fanatics, get up there and they they sell one side of the story. Uh, whereas, um, you know, going back to young men and saying, you know, it's almost like this King Hit situation that's carrying on in Australia, which is terrible. It doesn't take courage to hit someone from behind. It doesn't take courage at all. It actually takes no courage. But they have and no reference point to actually say to themselves, I'm going to do harm to someone. Well, I think it what... seems to be absent in the back of their head. And that's a fundamental. Yeah. Do but... no harm. So when you're going to do some harm, instantly, if you've got that notion in your head, I'm doing wrong, and you don't do it. Where is it? Well, it is, because what's happened, there's so much, there's so much harm that you see on TV contextually these days, and in the media and various other things, people have lost the reference point that actually you just don't do these things. Mm. That's, the, that's what I think. Yeah, we've just lost our moral compass. Tyson? Yeah, look, I agree with Harry. I think there's a, a very definite lack of role models for young men in our society. So the vulnerable in, in these groups are falling prey to some of these, these groups from overseas that are luring them in with promises of, of feeling macho and special and being a part of something rather than left on their own in society. When, when you went to school, was the school involved in teaching you moral direction or was it all from the parents? It was more from, more from the parents when I went to school, a little bit from the school but hardly anything now, I think it's very different. Interesting. Claire, final word on this one? Yeah, look I think, um, especially today, both parents work and there's not enough time with the kids in the house like there was going back when I was a kid. Um, and even so, when I was a kid, there was still a lot of this going on as well. It was just swept under the carpet. It's just come out more. 
Um, I think boys have been, as Anita said, brought up to don't cry, shake hands and, and don't allow your emotions to come out. Um, and this is why they're suppressing their, their, their thoughts and their emotions um, and, be, and becoming depressed and uh, there's a lot of suicides in young boys and, and young men. Terrible. Yeah, it's, and it's raising. Okay. Yes. It was a good letter. Thank you, Marcus of Bellevue Hills. But do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of Alon Treves and Aussie Opticals? Or do you like another one tonight? Do you like this one or another? I do like this one. Um, but I think I'm going to go for letter number one. Which was? Which was... I have to wind all the no way kidding. back. No kidding. Oh, the lady who doesn't have kids. Yeah. Tyson, which one do you like? Definitely letter one. I'll go with letter one. I like letter, letter one. Harry? Reluctantly, little one. <laughs> Reluctantly, there you go. You've done a lot of agreeing with the panel tonight. So there you go, case in point. Terrific. Coming out to Adriana of Lucky, Lucky Bay in South Australia, a pair of limited edition sunnies. Tyson Coleman, he's about to uh, perform for us. We've seen a little bit of the rehearsal earlier on and we like what we're about to see. Mate, I'll let you go and get ready. Jess, the lovely Jess, is about to take you over. And we'll say goodnight to the rest of the panel. Thank you for being with us tonight, Tyson, as well. Claire, terrific to have you on the show tonight. Great when, to be back. When are we going to get you back? That's a great <laughs> question. Know. You don't know, you don't know. Can we get I'll, you I'll back, back more, this than, year. More, more than we've had you over the last two years or uh, Look, I'm, I'm thinking about twice a year. Twice a year. Twice right. a year. Well, we could just go to Brisbane. We can, go, we, can go to Brisbane. we can go to Come Brisbane. To Brisbane. Gold Coast even oh, better. Man, you're hard to get on the show at the best of times. How are we going to organise it where we all fly over I'll and do fly the show to from Brisbane? It's an excuse yeah. for a holiday. Yeah, of course you would. Good to have you on the show, mate. We'll Always see you again. great. Yeah, H, are you going to fly to Brisbane with us? Well, I'd love to. We're all staying <laughs> at Claire's <laughs> place. So long as we don't get a room next door, that's the main thing. <laughs> We know what we're talking about. <laughs> We've got to go. We're going to go straight over to Tyson. Thank you for being with, with us tonight, Australia, and thank you, crew. Tyson, take it away. Don't want another lonely night. Don't want to feel this way inside. Know what it means to live the hell and not the dream. When I sleep, your memory haunts me. When I wake, you're still long gone. It's when the darkness overtakes me, I'm overwhelmed and crushed by what went wrong. Live each day with what I told you. I know too late that you're the one, and I cry. And the tears fall down I can feel the cold wind blowing me around As I stand by the ocean And I call out your name And I hear the taunting echoes of my shame Of my shame Can't face the pain of my mistakes Feels like my heart's about to break You think I never cared for you But that is anything but true I live each day with what I told you I know too late that you're the one And I cry like a baby No tears fall down I can feel Singing all around as I stand on this mountain and I call out your name and I hear the deafening silence of my pain, of my pain. 